What are those zigzaggy lines I keep seeing on videos on YouTube? Wait, you mean ones like this? So you can see on the uh, BBC's news ticker here, we've got the sort of this sort of combing and zigzaggy effect on the uh, video. What's going on there? Well, this is an interesting problem. The, the basic problem is that computer people don't understand video. What you're seeing there is an artifact of the way that the video systems were put together in the 30s when they developed the first video systems. They were designing them using analog electronics. Remember, this is about 10 years before the first computer was invented, the first electronic computer was invented. So they're having to develop the video system using pure analog electronics. And so they had to make sensible design decisions at that time to encode the video so they could transmit it and get it to people's homes where they could then watch it on their television screens. That's all well and good, but we've got modern computers and we've been to the moon and back since then. Why have we got zigzaggy lines in our videos? Well, We'll come to that, but let's actually look at what is actually happening, how these things are put together. Now, Sean's helpfully given me a bit of computer listing paper, which is great because it's divided into lines. So the way that the image was built up is that every 50th of a second, and we talked about in the previous video why you need to do it at 50 frames per second to get decent motion rendition, the camera would scan the image from the top left to the bottom right, and it would go along the first line swing back to the beginning and go along the next line, swing back and then go along the next one and so on until eventually it comes to the end, at which point it goes back up to the beginning of the frame and starts doing the same thing. But there's a problem. The amount of data that is generated scanning what was 405 line TV back in 1936 in the UK at 50 frames per second was too much that could be reliably transmitted with the technology at the time. There's too much information that you need to transmit too much bandwidth would be taken up. So they needed to do something. They couldn't go down to 25 frames per second because then it would flicker like crazy as we talked about in the last video. So they, they couldn't reduce the frame rate. They still had to shoot at 50 frames per second to get the frame rate. So they came up with a trick which they call interlacing. So if we start again, if we call the first one a line one, the second one is line two, three, four, five, and so on. What they said was, we will transmit first line one. So you scan across line one like so. And then we'll skip over line two and transmit line three. So we fly back and we transmit line three. And then we skip over line four and transmit line five. And so you do all that until you get down to the bottom of the image. So you're transmitting only the odd numbered lines. So in that 50 of a second, rather than saying the whole frame, you only send every other line or half the frame, and they refer to that as a field. And then you go back and scan the even numbered lines. So two, four, six, eight, and so on. So you'd scan all the even numbered lines in the next 50 of a second. So what you actually ended up doing, you send your first field, which would be all the odd lines. And then a 50 of a second later, you're sending the second field, which has got all the even lines in it. And then you're sending the third field, which has got all the odd lines in it again, and so on. So you're sending all the odd lines, all the even lines, all the odd lines. Now, because this has all been doing with analog equipment, you couldn't store the image and send the odd lines and send the even lines from the same point in time. So when you capture the odd lines here, this would start at time zero. When you start capturing the even lines, it's a 50 of a second later. So you're capturing this 20 milliseconds later and so on. So each field is sampled at a different point in time. So you've got 50 discrete images captured, but each of them only has half the number of lines and they have a different half in there. That's fine and you can transmit that, you can record that onto analog videotape, you can transmit it, you can do all sorts of processing with it until you start coming to put it into computers. And because what happened was is that people started to treat it all as saying, well actually people still talked about things being 25 frames per second in the UK. They never were, they were always 50 fields per second. So when it gets pushed into the computer, your computer will capture the first odd field and it will capture the second even field and it will start to interlace them back together to create a single frame. So you've got the odd things in that, in the actual image and it puts them together and it stores them in the QuickTime file or in the AVI or whatever it is you're using at 25 frames per second. Now that's fine because you could then play them back out of your sort of capture card in the mid 90s back onto a TV and it looked files because it would unpick them and send them out in the right order. 
The problem comes if you then try and display that image directly on screen in that because things are moving between each of those things you get these sort of little zigzag effects because actually this letter T here is moving horizontally so each time it's captured the lines are at a different point so when you interlock them you get that sort of combing effect on the edge. It's a pain. How do you display it properly? You do ask difficult questions. <laughs> So what do you have to do? Well, first of all, you need to think about it not as being a single frame that you interlace back together, but actually being separate frames. So if we have the lines along here and we have time along here, so we've got zero there, we've got field one here, field two here, field three here, field four, field five. On point zero, we're capturing, let's say we're doing this with the odd ones, we capture these lines here. Then at point one, we're actually capturing the bits in the middle. We're capturing that bit, 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 capturing that bit. Then at point two, we're capturing there, there, and so on. At point three, we're capturing here, here, here. What they're trying to do with interlace is to reduce the amount of information they need to transmit. Um, so you could think of it perhaps as a bit like a sort of early analog compression system. A bit like MP3 reduces the amount of information that needs to be stored to store some audio. Interlace is doing the same thing with video. It's reducing the amount of information, but hopefully it's not throwing away anything that you're going to see. So for something static like a, a video image of this book, very little is lost by transmitting it in an interlace form over uh, a, a non-interlace form, a progressive form as it would be called we'd still see all the, pretty much all the detail we'd see between the two. So we've reduced the amount of information we need to transmit by half, but we're still effectively transmitting what looks the same to the end user when they're viewing it on their television screen, certainly at the time when this was developed. But we're still throwing information away. Every sample point, we're throwing away half the information we could possibly have captured there. And actually what we're throwing away is the separation between vertical resolution i.e. how much detail we can represent, and also temporal resolution. What we've got here is this is a single capture point. So point zero, we capture all the odd lines. Point one, we capture all the even lines. Now, think about something like the piece of paper I am capturing here. So at point zero, I capture this line here, which is white, and this line, which is all white, and so on all the way down. So effectively what we capture at each point on here is a completely white field. At this point though, we capture this line which is green, then we capture this line which is also green, and we capture this line which is also green. And at this point in time we capture a completely green field. The next point in time we go back and capture a completely white field, and then we capture a completely green field. And if you were to display this, what you would see would not be a series of white and green lines, but actually the image flashing between white and green. We've got to a situation where, yes, we've reduced the amount of information that we need to transmit, but we've also manipulated the information so that we cannot distinguish between high-resolution vertical information... Did Siri just help, try to help with the video? <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm sorry, Siri, you can't do a computer file yet. It's OK, really. So, effectively, what we've got is we've mapped both the high frequency vertical information and also temporal information into the same part of the encoding of the information. And so there's no easy way to distinguish between the two. So a high frequency information like this oscillating white and green pattern is indistinguishable once we've interlaced it from a flashing white and green screen. There's just no way you can deal with that. The way you get around this is that inside the camera when you sample the information, you filter it vertically so that you don't have that high resolution image there. So effectively, an interlaced camera has got a slightly lower vertical resolution than the progressive one would have, but probably around 70% of the vertical information is still there. Still better than you'd get if you only transmitted a smaller number of lines every frame. So it gives you the benefit. But this still comes down to think, how on earth do we display interlaced material on something like a computer which has an inherently progressive display without getting all the sort of zigzaggy patterns. Well, it's not an easy it's not an easy problem to solve. It can be in some situations. So there's some situations where it can be really easy to deal with. For example, 
film translated onto a video. Film shot at 25 frames per second, as we talked about in the other one. The way that is transferred onto videotape is that you take the piece of film, you scan the odd numbered lines, transmit that as a field, you scan the even numbered lines, transmit that as a field, then move on to the next frame. So actually in those points, the two fields do come from the same point in time. So actually the best way to knit them back together is literally to weave them together, you no, know, and you get the same film frame that you started with, or the, the representation of it, you get all the detail. So that's the best way to do it for film material. For something like video, as we've seen on the computer screen, that doesn't work. What you need to do is actually only have information that should be at point zero displayed there, and have only have information at point one displayed here, and only have information at point two displayed here. How on earth do you go about that? Well, there's several ways you could do it. You could just say, well, okay, I know it's gonna fill in this gap here, so what I'll do is I'll interpolate between line one and line three to work out what line two would be. So I'll just use the information at the start point in time and just create a sort of ersatz thing there. And then I'll do the same between three and five, between five and seven, and so on. The problem that happens here is that you immediately reduce the resolution down to only being as high as the number of lines you've got in a field. So is there a better way you can do this? Well, yeah, basically what you want to do is to generate the information that would have been there if the camera had captured it at that point. And the way you can do that is not just use the line above and the line below, but also realize that you know what was in that point 50, a 50 of a second before, and you could also know what's in that point 50 of a second in the future if you delayed everything by a single field. So what we do, instead of actually trying to generate this frame here at point two, we store it digitally, which we can do in the computer quite easily, until we get to point three, at which point we've already seen this information, so we can use that. We've got this information, because it's just arrived, and we've got these two bits of information, and we can combine all that together to generate the data that should be at this point and the data that should be at this point and so on. So we delay the video by a field or two fields and suddenly we now have more information. We've got something that's in the future from the point we're generating, we've got the information that's in the past that we've already seen and the information that's on different lines as well. And we can combine all that in various different complicated algorithms to generate the information. And the more expensive your equipment, the cleverer the algorithm will be and the better it will do. And so if we were to enable one of them on our computer, and VLC, which is what I'm using here, has got several built in, then I'm going to enable yet another deinterlacing algorithm. And if I turn it on, you will see that suddenly, instead of being zigzaggy, it goes back to being straightforward text. Most TVs these days are LCD panels or LED yep. or whatever, maybe plasma. So are they doing this kind of stuff all the time then, or do they use a different method? No, so they're doing this inside every LCD you'll get. There will be a chip which will be taking the video and processing it to produce progressive video from the interlaced video that's coming in. And depending on how much you pay for that chip, whether it's a 50p chip or a 75p chip, and that 50p is the price, not the resolution of the video it's producing. 50 pence. 50 pence chip or 50 cents, because it's probably worth more these days, then you are gonna get a better quality algorithm. Hopefully you have one that's reprogrammable, but that costs even more money. So that's it, so that's, that's why we get jaggedy lines and that's how you potentially fix them. No. <laughs> You didn't think it was going to be that simple, did you? All right, let's go back to um, things. So we, the video signal coming in is a series of fields. Screen, and then, so we got a bit later on, we move it up, show the next one, and so on. And so by doing that fast enough, you get the appearance of motion 